I normally, I'm old, I go to bed early, I'm now reaching loopy stage, so it gets really fun at this point, honestly. Slightly loopy Lee is adorable. <laughs> true, true, true story. And we all woke up for some reason, our, our roommate this morning woke up at before seven and decided that she needed to wake up before seven. And I love her, but it was before seven. And the Starbucks wasn't delivering coffee. And, and it was before seven. We've gotten caffeine since then, but you know. Caffeine doesn't so affect me, so. Her to the bed Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Tie her down, make sure she doesn't get up at seven. We just need to teach her that, you know, if you wake up at that time, you pull out your iPad or your iPhone and you just poke and read for, you know, an hour until it becomes a decent time in the morning. Um, so, uh, back on topic. <laughs> There is a topic. Oh, uh, right, we're doing tea ceremony. We are doing tea ceremony. Are you ready to switch languages? Not quite. Okay. So I, I have a bachelor's in Asian studies, concentration in Japanese, a master's in classical Japanese language and literature, which I got for funsies, like you do. Um, I learned tea ceremony when I did uh, study abroad in Japan, and I, I took a class, and. And now we present today's conventions for all of y'all. Yeah. There's definitely more space on the left if you want to keep pushing through, push on through. The left hand side's got better space. Um, we typically, uh, because I learned this in a Japanese way, uh, we will be demonstrating it in a Japanese way. So I am going to perform it and just We're not perform gonna explain it. Anything. We won't explain anything. We're just going to do it. Then we will go back and give you explanations. But the traditional way of the traditional Asian way of teaching is you just watch. You watch. As the master does. And in theory you do it enough times that in you learn what you're doing, maybe. Um, we sort of adapt. We we start with the very Asian style and then we backtrack to the more American style because uh, while we may have studied traditionally, uh, we are also two very American girls. Um, so we try to blend the styles a little bit. American? Me? Really? Nope. Okay. Do you need help up? All right. Get into the proper kneeling position. <laughs> oh, cool. That's what she said? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to cheat a little more to the uh, angle, a little more chance that we give the left hand view is the best that they can. They're not only seeing your butt. <laughs> Although it's a very pretty Obi in the back, so you know. You get to really see the details of how well they're tied. <laughs> All right. Flash me a little Yeah, flash me a little list tonight. All right. Do you speak Japanese, Liz? Uh, Ready? Hi. That's about all I know of Japanese. Hi. Gambare. Well, and then my line's here. So I'm not going to sit proper and pretty because my knees never, ever allowed me to do it. Uh, but I am going to, you know, pretend to be modesty with a little bit of, you know, Sleeve over the knees here to not completely flash you guys in the front. All right, I'm ready if you're ready. Pause, center. So we are gonna be very fairly quiet for this first few minutes uh, as we sort of run through the traditional ceremony. Uh, and like I said, we will back up and uh, explain more fully what we're doing and why we're doing and where it came from as sort of our secondary. It's always fun at this point because we hear whatever's going on in the rooms around us. The most fun is when we were next door to the concert. Can we shut the door, if at all possible? Uh, 
got a little space to the left if you want to come around the front. But if we can close the door for a little bit. Okasio, Zozo, Shodai, Ipashimas. Shodai, Itashimas. Oshimai, Kudasai, Oshimai, Itashimas. You can also drag it out to take, you know, an entire day if you want to. Um, we try to split the difference and, you know, make it take about an hour, because, you know, that's what we're scheduled for. <laughs> um, so, the we're going to talk a little bit about tea and then we'll go through the ceremony again and, and show you all of our toys more. and our tools and so forth as we go. Uh, the type of tea ceremony that I do is called Rakobon. It is the simplest of all the tea ceremonies. Uh, even other tea ceremonies are all going to have uh, most of the same moves, a lot of the same tools, the same processing. It just may have more tools. For example, one of the most classic things that you may uh, think of when you think tea ceremony is the long-handled bamboo ladle that is used in some variants of the tea ceremony, not in the one that I do. Um, but it is a tool that is used in legit tea ceremony. Tea. All tea comes from a single type of plant, the Camilla senesis. I totally butchered that, but it's been a long time since I did Latin. 
Uh, the tea plant. The tea plant is literally the only it plant. One species. One species. That is the only one that is actually real tea. If you are drinking something that does not include that plant, you are not actually drinking tea. You are drinking uh, tisan. Which is, you know, hot water with plants in it. Yeah, yeah. But not actually tea. Uh, tea uh, was introduced to Japan first about 805. Uh, it was brought over by some Buddhist monks who went over to China to study. They came back with tea. It did not, didn't really get any popularity. It had a few years fed and then was forgotten about for a couple hundred years. It came back in the 12th century, the end of the 12th century, about 1180. Uh, a Buddhist monk by the name of Azai, uh, or known to us as Azai, uh, traveled to China. And he was tired of the Buddhism that he had around him, and he wanted to go to the source. If you know anything about uh, religious history, you know Buddhism actually came from India, but as far as the Japanese were concerned, China was kind of the source. And going there was good enough. Uh, Eizai developed a type of Buddhism and brought it back to Japan. Uh, the type of Buddhism that he practiced uh, came, uh, was given the name Zen. Uh, you may be familiar with this. It is a very meditative process. Um, if you've been to any of my panels, you've heard me talk about it too. Mm -hmm. uh, the, there are two sects of Zen Buddhism in Japan. Eizai was the Rinzai sect. The Rinzai believes in uh, reaching enlightenment by meditating on koan. Koan are uh, little mind puzzles that, uh, that help train your mind to think a little bit differently. For example, what is the sound of one hand clapping? Is a famous koan. Um, the, just uh, for your information, the other type of uh, Zen Buddhism is the Soto sect that believes that the act of meditation itself is enlightenment. Um, and so they practice a lot more just meditation. Anyway, at first, it was mostly the monks that were drinking uh, tea uh, for a couple reasons. One, green tea is great for your health. It's got a lot of those antioxidants that are so good for you. Second thing is, it's got a lot of caffeine. And when you spend all day meditating, you need the caffeine. The caffeine is, is a useful thing. I wouldn't know it doesn't affect me. Sure. Now, I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Depends on the day. So the thing about the priesthood of, of the Buddhist priests, well, you know, in, in Western history, European history, uh, a lot of times uh, you, if you had multiple sons, you know, the first one was your heir, the second one you might push off to priesthood. Um, or, you know, you're, you're getting old and you're worried about your immortal soul, you're going to give a lot of money to the priests. Same sort of thing in Japan. Uh, they, if they had some extra sons, they might push off one to be a priest. Uh, if they were tired of the world and decided that they think they've only got a few years left, they might want to be a priest for those couple of years and, and try to protect their afterlife or they're just going to give a lot of money and, and have the priests pay, uh, pray on their behalf. There's a lot of interlap between the nobles and the priests. So since the priests were all drinking tea, the nobles started doing it too. Now the thing about nobles is, well, they had a lot of time on their hands to do a lot of partying. Mm -hmm. I mean, what else are you going to do? You're going to party. Uh, the nobles uh, like to uh, do a lot of competitions. Uh, poetry competitions were huge. I mean, who could compose a better poem on the topic or reference a classic poem better? Not slam poetry, though. It was I'm not. It's they'd not. appreciate the modern. That would be an interesting, you know, story to do. Is to upgrade. Anyway, so uh, poetry competitions, you know, archery competitions were, you know, the the noble men and everything. Well, they also did tea drinking parties. And tea, competi tea, tea drinking competitions. competitions. Tea competitions. Competitive tea drinking. So how do you do competitive tea drinking? Well, here's the thing. Besides how the tea is processed after you harvest it, where the tea is grown will also greatly affect the flavor of the tea. The altitude of where it's grown, the soil, 
uh, the acidity, all of that will affect the tea taste. So, in Japan, particularly in those classic early years, tea uh, was planted in, and came from the Togano Mountain. Now, the Togano Mountain, that's where the real tea was grown. That was the honcha, real tea. If it was grown anywhere else, it was hecha, non-tea. And so, so not only are they snobs about tea only comes from one plant, tea only comes from one mountain in Japan. Yeah, yeah. And at least in the classic area. And so the tea drinking competitions would be, can you, do you have a refined enough palate that you can taste which one is the honcha and which one is the hecha? And, you know, if you are refined enough, you would be able to do it. Hence, competitive tea drinking. So now we have a lot of tea parties. Well, you start getting a, a, a little bit later and uh, pushing the uh, 15th century now. And we've got a lot of, you know, teas now no longer quite as uh, precious. precious. You get a monk known to us as EQ. Now, EQ is a very fascinating, interesting character. I absolutely adore him. Uh, in other years, I've done an entire panel on him. Legend has it he could have been emperor twice and Who was not been? he rejected not. Uh, he decided that he wanted to help spread zen buddhism out not just to the limited priests or the nobles but to to more people and how he was going to do that was he was going to gather to him a whole bunch of disciples who would infuse the principles of zen into cultural and artistic endeavors. Therefore, those of you who went to my brush painting panel, you heard me talk about the four tenets of Buddhism in relevance to painting. And it's also in relevance to flower arranging, drawing swords and gardens, everything. And everything. Tea. So the four noble truths, purity, harmony, tranquility, and respect. All those elements are found in these Zen arts. So, under EQ studied Shuko. Shuko um, was the one who focused on the tea. Was the one who focused on the tea. Uh, of all of EQ's disciples, Shuko decided, I am going to um, study the way, find enlightenment through tea drinking. Honestly, not a bad choice. And the idea is, by doing this meditative process and preparing, serving, drinking the tea, you might find enlightenment because this is becoming a meditative process. Um, after Shuko, uh, the father of the tea ceremony. It's sort of the, the grandfather. After Shuko started this idea of finding the way through tea, we get a student, I think it's actually a student of a student of his, Sen no Riku, who is the one who took all the ideas of, of this meditative tea drinking and codified the steps into what we have of tea ceremony today. So what we have tea ceremony all comes from Sen no Riku. Um, the, some of the aspects of the tea ceremony really brought forth some of the aesthetic principles of medieval Japan. The idea of wabi, this unpretentious, imperfect, irregular beauty. At the time, the Chinese were drinking tea and their little ceremonies were becoming these lavish affairs. They had super uh, expensive lacquerware and all these big brand tools, whereas the Japanese decided, you We're know, gonna a simple bamboo. it's going to be simple bamboo whisk and scoop. It's going to be a lot of times clay pinch pots, not even, you know, wheel thrown. I mean, mine's wheel thrown, but uh, it could be very simple tools. Also, by this point, uh, China was started to switch over more to steeped tea, whereas Japan kept with the uh, uh, powder tea. So if you uh, partake of a Chinese tea ceremony, it's usually more the steeped, is my understanding. 
There are two types of tea that will be used in a tea ceremony. It's all matcha, but there is a thick tea and a thin tea. If you had gotten an opportunity to partake of this tea, unfortunately, COVID, um, what I do is a thin tea. The thin tea does not mean that it is weak. Matcha is strong. If you have a you know, matcha latte at you know, your Starbucks or whatnot, you know there is significant flavor to it. The thin tea is not weak, it is strong. What is the difference? The thick tea is syrup. It is molasses. It is thick. Um, the, thin, the thick tea is always going to be a formal affair. It is a high honor. I have gotten to partake of it once. It is an acquired taste that I have not acquired. <laughs> but it is a very, if you ever get an opportunity, it is a great honor. Smile and, you know, bear it. Thin tea could be a formal ceremony or it could be an informal one. Um, and you would sort of be, you would have an idea of if, if this was going to be a formal and informal. A formal one is going to be quiet. It is going to be very solemn. Uh, a informal one, you could be chatting, um, you could be making up, the host could be drinking tea with the guests. Uh, it could be, you know, very, very casual. We do somewhere in between. Let's be honest, we think it's casual. Yeah, that's pretty true. Um, okay, uh, if you are invited to a tea ceremony. Oh, right, I'm invited. Go ahead and check it out and pass on. <laughs> <laughs> don't stab yourself. Yeah, don't, 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 don't be rough with them. Uh -huh. I've been invited. Uh -huh. If you have been invited to a tea ceremony. So this is my little guest kit. Um, you don't need to have a guest kit, but it's nice to have a guest kit. Um, I have a little fabric napkin. Mine has a cute origami pattern to it. Um, I have a little, well, it's plastic, but it w could also be bamboo traditionally, a uh, little knife for if I need to chop up my sweet. This is life size, this is not miniature size. Yep. Um, and then the fan is the symbol that I am a guest. And the fan would be placed in front of her knees. At her I seat. can't put it in front of my knees when I'm, you know, not sitting properly, but you know. Um, meanwhile, this would be the sign that I am the host. This oh, I've got a couple of the host. I'm going to start these in the other direction. The Fukasa is just a lot. Uh, traditionally red, could be orange, whatever. Welcome to. Um, they can pass on if you'd like. The other so red one there uh, was the one that I studied with. I lost it for five years. And literally yesterday literally, afternoon, I found it. The fairies decided to return it. I swear, I have searched that thing multiple times. It was not there, it was not there, it was suddenly there. The fairies returned it yesterday in the middle of the ceremony. Uh, uh, so, as a guest, uh, guest as, the host, <laughs> as the host, I will have the Fukasa. I fold it multiple times to ceremoniously purify my tools. Uh, since I am a host that is stepping on her kimono. Uh, as, since I'm a host that identifies as female, I will tuck my fukasa in the top of my obi. If I was a host that identified male, I would tuck it uh, at, at the bottom of my, of my obi. I'm sure there's a joke there, but we'll leave We've it to you We've made it before. <laughs> we leave it to you to finish that joke. Um, so, you are a guest, you are invited. A tea house is usually a small building in, back in a garden. So you would come you are my garden. to a walled gate. You would come to the gate. Here's my walled gate. You would come into the gate and there would be, at the entrance, a stone basin with water, a bamboo ladle, long handle, bamboo. You would pour your hand, 
and then rinse your mouth a little bit to virtually purify yourself. Then you would come in. There may be multiple paths through the garden. Uh, not really, it's very overgrown, I'm sorry. My lover has neglected me and my garden has become overgrown. You cannot see the house through the grass. My sleeves are wet with my tears. Classic poetry. <laughs> so, you would make your way through the garden. If there were multiple paths, your host would mark the path for you in it's some way to indicate which way to go. It is pretty clear. It is very clear. There's only one way to go. Uh, you would follow this path, and the host may want you to notice something on this way. It could be a particularly blooming flower. Oh, that is gorgeous. I want you to notice that. <laughs> Found in the artist alley, I bet. Uh, so you would notice something like a flowering uh, bush, or uh, that is beautiful. Yes, I want you to notice that. Um, or it might be that there is uh, something in bloom that has the most delicious fragrance and yeah, I'm getting pretty ripe at this point, but you know, remember, shower every day. <laughs> Drink your water, have, have meals, all of that, it's important. Sleep. Um, I told you I'm a little loopy at this point. Um, or there might be uh, uh, the way the water is hitting this rock just so, and it is sounding for a cup of water. Does that count? Sure. Yeah. Uh, the, the cup of water sounds just so when you kick it and trip over it. <laughs> you would then come through. Now, the host would want you to notice these things because it might enhance your appreciation for the theme of this gathering. You see, tea ceremonies oftentimes are like your five-year-old birthday parties when you have a Star Wars themed party. <laughs> Or, you know, something like that. In the case of tea ceremonies, it might be something like, if it is summer, you might want a mountain view so you can think of the cool ocean air that will uh, have cool so uh, thoughts to cool you down from the heat. If it's in the spring, you might have cherry blossoms. So you can think about the evanescence and the uh, fleeting, nature. fleeting nature. Thank you, that's the word I was looking for. The fleeting nature of uh, life and beauty and aware, aware. So, um, summer also you might have a uh, a ghost story theme because summer is the ghost season in Japan. And again, scaring you is going to cool you off because you get chills, that sort of thing. When I uh, did my tea ceremony class, our final project was a big. Uh, celebration uh, tea gathering uh, for the neighborhood and uh, people who could come. We themed ours on a no play based on a uh, Japanese legend, the legend of the Heavenly Maiden. Uh, just of it, Heavenly Maiden, she was bathing, man, a human man came up, saw her, stole her heavenly robes and hid it. She could no longer go up to heaven and had to stay behind and be his wife. Some, you know, legends, they were actually happy together and whatnot, others not happy and she found her robe and, you know, killed him, etc., etc. <laughs> uh, I don't remember the, how the no legend ended. I think it was one of the tragic ones, because it's yeah. Japanese, it's always going to be tragic. So, um, so there would be a theme, you would then come up to, uh, you made your way through the garden, you would come up to the tea house. Now the tea house, is a small building. It is four and a half tatami. Tatami are the traditional woven mats that uh, was sort of a unit of measurement for the Japanese rooms. Um, in this case, four and a half tatami is going to be about nine by nine square. It is a small building. There would be a veranda around the outside of it. You would come up, take your shoes off, Place, uh, turn them so you could easily step back into them on your way um, when you are leaving. And you would come and there would be a very low door that you would have to uh, scoot yourself in through. The idea of this is that we are all equal and humble for tea. 
This is complete and utter bullshit. I'm waiting for it. Because the truth of the matter is, once you're in the tea house, you sit according to rank. The highest ranked person, the first guest, uh, sits closest to the host, and then the lower rank you are, the further away from the host you sit, and the later you get served in the order. Oh, wow. Now, how do you determine rank? Rank is a very complicated process that involves things like age, gender, job, family, everything. I am not native Japanese. I do not actually understand it. But it is a thing, if you were a native Japanese person, you would intuitively know. Uh, business cards are a big thing because it helps them identify who has the higher rank. So, you know, passing of business cards is a very common thing. Asking someone's age is not considered impolite. It is a very common thing because that helps identify people's ranks relative to each other. In day-to-day -day context, that would be who bows lower to the other and what how, what level of politeness you should be speaking to that person. You always speak politely, but there is polite, and then there's more polite, and then there's super polite. And I mean, there is casual. And then there's casual, but really, we start with polite as the default and go yeah. up from there. So, um, in the case of tea ceremony, you would be sitting in social order. So you are not actually equal before tea, but it's a nice idea. <laughs> uh, yes, that would be factored in. Yeah, men, men outrank. Yep. So that is part of it. Your family, your occupation, uh, your age, all that plays in. And it's some kind of complex formula. It is a very complex formula. I not just. As a woman, you're automatically less than. It's you know relative to the age and the job and the family and the. They understand it. <laughs> it gets a mystery to everyone else. <laughs> um. So another thing, uh, just fun fact. Uh, after a while, the tea ceremony, even though it was sort of the the for the masses. Over time, it has become a little bit more of the cultured and the highbrow. So some of the younger folks were like, you know what? In China, they have this steep tea. We're going to bring this sencha steeped tea over. And it doesn't have all these, you know, having to whisk it. You can just steep and drink it. And so it became the hipster drink with sencha. If you know anything of, you know, Japanese teas and everything, sencha is you know, your basic that you're going to be drinking at a Japanese restaurant. It's all you know, sencha now. It, it's, it, it's all sencha now. It, it, that's the basic tea. So nowadays, the hipsters are back to matcha. <laughs> um, so I'd be sitting, or guests would be sitting according to rank. She would be in the back. And I would. everything would yeah, be perfectly see, clean. Again, nine by nine square, there is still a back room. The back room is where I have all of my tools. Um, actually, I forgot to mention, when you come into the tea house, there's going to be an alcove oh, in right, front of my alcove. In the alcove, there might be a brush painting, there might be a scroll with calligraphy. Uh, ours uh, is this All lovely above. mountain view. Um, the, there might be flower arrangement, there might be some incense. We're the incense. We are at this point. <laughs> um, and again, it would all have to do with a theme. And you would sit and meditate at the Elko for a little bit. And, and then you'd come in. And then side. you would come in and sit. There would be a brazier? A fire in the middle. Of the fire. Fire. There would be fire. For some reason, they don't like us to have that in a con. I don't know why. Totally not a fire. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there would be a fire, and you would sit next to it. There would be a kettle. And I would be in the back room. There would be a shoji screen door. Now, here is the thing. As I said, this is a meditative process. And the way it is meditative is there are prescribed steps. There is an order that you do things. There is a set way you do it. And that is so you learn that and then you don't have to think about it. Uh, you just do it, and that is how it becomes a meditative process. 
Um, so all of it is prescribed motions, prescribed order of doing things. Um, I don't have all the steps memorized anymore because some of it involves things like how you, you walk in. And I don't have two Tommy maps to walk in on, so I don't quite remember the order of the footwork anymore. But behind my screen, I would be kneeling. Oh. <laughs> who, who thought this was a good idea? Got it. <laughs> You would be kneeling by the screen door. I would, with one hand, open a couple inches and then open it up the rest of the way with the other hand. Again, all prescribed motions. I would bow. There's a prescribed um, amount of bowing that I am to do. I would then get up with my tray, walk in, prescribed foot order. The idea is because tatami mats have uh, seats between the mats. Uh, you do not want to step on the crack between the tatami mats. You know, uh, you know, you step on the crack, you break your mama's back. It's the same sort of thing with the tatami mats. You don't want to do it. And so the prescribed foot order has it so you are stepping into the room through the tatami mats without stepping on the uh, cracks of the tatami mats. I would then come up to my fire and I would sit. And there is actually uh, how you are placed um, in front of the fire to the uh, guest, you know, turn straight on, that's also prescribed, and it sort of uh, depends on the formality of the occasion. Again, I don't quite remember. Because well, we tend to deliberately sit so that she's cheated as much as possible so that we've got a 360 of you of her as we can get. Can't quite manage that, but we, we do our best in our various circumstances here. And then uh, I would have my tools all ready so we could make tea. And again, depending on the formality, I could be making and we could both be drinking. We could have multiple guests and again, I could make a bowl for each of them or it could be I would make a bowl for her, she would drink it, turn it back, I would make another bowl for the next person or I could have multiple bowls at my side and make a bowl for everybody. It could be I would make uh, one bowl, she would have a sip, pass it down to the next guest. These are all acceptable depending on the formality, on the formality and the occasion. Uh, Our formality is we're teaching it in a con. <laughs> um, so, all of my equipment would be fresh and clean from the black back room, but I would now ritually purify everything as part of the meditative process of, and to show the harmony, purity, tranquility, and respect for my tools and my guest. If I have one, I could be doing it for myself. That's also allowed. Yeah. Whew. Okay. You ready to start building for casa? Yeah, I am. Because that's what she pours my water. The nice thing is the Picasso also doubles as a uh, pot holder yep. so that you don't burn your fingers on the hot glass. Uh, tea should be a particular temperature. If it is too warm, uh, the water, if it's too warm or cold, things don't blend as well. I would pour a little bit of water in. I would knock things over. I would pour a little water in, take my whisk, and I'm going to sort of spin it into the water a little bit. And then I would hold up I spit, then I hold up, and I examine to make certain that there is no broken tongs. Bamboo like this is like fish bones. You do not want to accidentally swallow one. It is not good. I would then spin again in the water and check a second time. Again, you do not want any broken tongs. You would then draw to a close. Set it down, dump the water out. Because You'll you know, notice it has now cleaned a perfectly clean whisk, therefore the water is no good anymore. Exactly. <laughs> you will notice I, you know, draw my sleeve back so I keep it out of the way while I am dumping the water. I made the mistake once of not wearing a kimono when I did this demonstration, and I was wearing just a different cosplay. I kept reaching for the sleeve. It was not there. It was a problem. <laughs> so I've always made certain that I'm wearing a kimono for this. I suffer for my art. This thing is gorgeous, but very hot right now. I would then, I have a nice little cotton cloth that would be damp. I'm not bothering making it damp right now because 
I'm not actually making tea. I would then wipe the bowl and again, prescribed order of things. I set the bowl down and I do the inside. In, in, center, center hook. I set my cloth down, the ball would be down. I am now ready to make tea. I have richly purified my equipment. I am ready to make tea. So I would tell my guest, Ocasio Dozo, please help yourself to a snack. Uh, there is usually traditionally thi um, moist snack or a dry snack. Uh, thick tea usually has a moist snack, whereas the thin tea is to a snack because it is delicious and I love it. Uh, we have discovered that Dove chocolate, really, really tasty with matcha. It, it really enhances the flavor of both the chocolate and the matcha. So, and something about, I mean, normally I'm a little iffy on the dove, but for some reason with the matcha tea, pretty really milk. good, real good. Milk milk. chocolate or dark chocolate? Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> Uh, seriously, it goes good with either, and usually because Katsukon is right around uh, Valentine's Day, you get the little hearts, uh, yeah, discount, on uh, the national discount. holiday of day after Valentine's Day, yeah. discount chocolate day. Yeah. Yes. Um, and yeah, but discount chocolate day. Um, um, so she would be partaking of her snack while I would be making her tea. Well, so you tell me. Oh, I did say I was oh. dozo. And I replied to her, choda ni tashimasu, which basically means thanks for the grub, but a whole lot more polite. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if there were other guests, I have to apologize for going ahead of the other guests because that's so rude of me. So I also apologize to the next guest with osaki ni. And if there were more than one guest, the next guest, when they started their snack part, uh, would thank me first. By, with an Oshiban Itashimasu. That's with the tea, not the snack. Oh, no, they don't have to thank me for the snack. You're right. They just, you know, Osaki needs the next person. Sorry for, you know, and thank the host. Uh, Choda Itashimasu. Thanks for the grub. And then they apologize to the next person and, and so on. And While so they are eating their snack, I am making the tea. Now, if it was, if I'm making like one bowl and they're passing it down, they would all have their snack now. Uh, if, they're, if I make one bowl per person, you would have your snack as I am making your tea. That um, way there the chocolate's nice and melty in your mouth while the tea is coming. And so then the flavors blend for My, my scoop tells me how much, and again, it is prescribed. Typically when I do this, I uh, make it light. Um, now, when she says she's making it light, that doesn't mean it's... She, she's, that the, her version of, of, of weak uh, is still stronger than, let's be honest, stronger than the matcha latte you get from Starbucks by a landslide. And I would scoop my tea into my uh, bowl. I would then pour some hot water. Carefully. Carefully, I'm like totally. So not to burn anything. And you don't want to overfill because you need to whisk. And then I uh, whisk, 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 whisk. And uh, if, if your arm is getting tired, you keep whisking. And you, you know, back and forth, little circles, da da da. You do not want any of the powder to remain, so you are whisking no, that. You do not want the powder in clumps. I just did, you know, sort of half, half acid and, you know, just do a quick. And then I got a whole mouthful of powder one time. <laughs> so I've been she very good doing since. That. Um, the idea is you whisk it, whisk it, you get all the powder gone, and you should get a nice frothy head on your tea. All right, we're, the, we're not talking super thick like Guinness, but we are talking a full layer of bubbles across the top. If the so water you know, is a good temperature, powder. it should froth with a good whisking. If it is not the right temperature, it doesn't matter how much you whisk, it is not going to froth. That's a good indication of whether the water is too hot or too cold. It, it just won't go proper. And you whisk, 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 whisk and then draw to a close when it is ready. I would then hand the bowl to my guests. Now, some bowls have a front and a back. We made the mistake of doing this with a cat bowl once. It had a cat head and a cat bowl. <laughs> we decided that was a mistake and replaced that bowl. So, uh, mountain view, because again, theme of mountains. mountains. That's our theme, mountains. 
because we're um, from New Hampshire. Yes. Uh, so I would hand her the bowl with a pretty front facing her. And when I take the bowl, the first thing I do is I pick it up and I admire that pretty face. It is very pretty. It is very pretty. And then I turn the bowl, and it is, again, for me, a prescribed movement. It's two turns to get a uh, 180, so that now the pretty side is facing all of you, and the plain side is facing me, and I drink from the plain side, the back of the bowl. And I can sip my tea and chat, and sip my tea and chat. Oh, and you would only be chatting if it was an informal one. Otherwise, I would just meditatively sip my tea. And then when I finish, I wipe the lip with my fingers, turn the bowl so the pretty side is once more. You forgot the uh, Osaki oh, at right. this point. When I get the tea, she tells me. I don't tell you anything. I just she said it She hands again. me the tea. And I'm like, oh, right, she handed me tea. And I tell her, um, Ultimai Chodai Itashimas, which is thanks for the tea. Um, if there were other guests, I apologize to them with an osaki ni. If you were the second guest or the third guest or the fourth guest, oshiban atashimasu to me. Uh, or to guest, whoever, whoever was you, in front of you. Whoever's, whatever guest is in front of you. Uh, basically, I'm going to join you in drinking this tea. And then you also otomai chodai itashimasu to the host. And you also apologize to whoever's after you. You know, there's lots of polite, formal. Unless you're right. Yeah, in which case if, you if you're the last person, you don't need to apologize to nobody. <laughs> you just get to, you know, say, I'm going to join you in drinking this tea and enjoy the tea. Of course, if you're the last guest, you're still more important than all you losers who didn't get invited. So, you know, it's okay. <laughs> um, but when I finish, I pass the bowl back. I would then pour a little water in to rinse the bowl out, set it down, and I'm ready to make more tea if she would like more tea. If I would like more tea, I'd say nothing. And I make more tea. One of the part, one of the important roles as the first guest is I'm supposed to gauge everybody's mood, including the host, to know whether it's time to stop. The, the host's mood is, oh my god, my ankles are killing me. Oh my god, this kimono is way too hot. Please! <laughs> and so I, sensing that the time is now, tell her, Oshimai Kudasai, which is please close the ceremony. Oshimai Itashimas. I will humbly close the ceremony. And then she ritually purifies everything, but on the way out, she half asses it. I do, because even though things are actually legit dirty now, I'm only going to do half the ritual purifying that I did to start with. And then I would bring things back and actually clean it. But she has told me I'm done. I am pouring a little water into my bowl. And I am going to spin my, it would actually be down, but I'm picking it up so you can see. I would spin my whisk and I would check. There is in fact no broken tines in this time. I would then, I only did it once this time as opposed to the twice, and I draw to a close. Dump out the water. Dump out the water, yeah, thank you. Dump, Dump out, out the water. water. And then the napkin goes in the bowl. I'm not even the wiping the bowl, bowl down. I am just napkin in, whisk in, not awesome. setting the bowl. I time. now hold my scoop. Not properly setting it down, not waiting to fold it. No, no, she's going to fold with the scoop in hand now. Because, you know, even And I'm only doing it, you know, half the time that I did. Top, bottom, top. Set bottom. it. I'm not even wiping down the natsume, just the scoop half. Pa uh, bang off a little bit of powder. Fold for the clothes. Tuck it in. I would pick up my tea and, and go in out. the back. And, and I'm going to stand act. up, and I'm going to need help. And then she would, act. <laughs> and then she would actually wash everything for real in the oh, back. Oh, oh. And not hurt herself getting down. Yeah. Oh, oh no, no, the ankles are not going to support me right now. <laughs> so she's going to sit on the table. But at least we're not in sazen. Um, so she would go into the back and actually wash the stuff, and then our, the guests would, you know, filter out back into the garden and the veranda. If it was less formal, we might, you know, go out for, you know, hang out in the garden for a bit, go back in for a second course or a third course. We could really stretch this out. We could have proper meals. And, and you snacks. could have a thick tea and then go out and admire the garden, come back in, have some thin tea, you can uh, really snacks, meals. You could, this could be an all day thing. You could make it in a bit. <laughs> um, usually it won't be, but it could be. 
We, we timed it for about an hour. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I think that's our formal piece of it. How's our time? Um, eight we've minutes. got eight, about eight, seven, eight so, minutes there. Um, questions, questions that folks might have? Also, um, if you guys enjoyed, uh, we do, I don't know if- I didn't bring it. We have a little tip jar. You are welcome to donate. Or you are not required to. Oh. Or come down and visit us in the Artist Alley. Uh, come visit us. Tomorrow if you don't. Are you in Artist Alley or Dealer's Room? Dealer's, Dealer's room. room. Straight through. All right.